So due to all of the complicated shapes, vents, and aerodynamic stuff on this model, the doors are molded separately. They have a pin that molds into the door and connects it nicely and also have some part of the sprue that is still left on. It needs to be cut off and cut flush, otherwise the door won't fit in. With that removed, the door could be test fitted to see if it needed any adjustment. It needed a little bit of sanding on one of the intersections that connected together as it was a bit too high and therefore the door wasn't really lining up straight. So that was sanded down a little bit with a sanding stick, another test fit or two, a bit of sanding and it fit in perfectly fine afterward. The door on the other side had a similar problem and therefore I also did that same fix as I did on the other side, though this one needed a bit more sanding on the top sections of the door front and back in order to get them level with the rest of the bodywork, which also was a quick and easy fix. A lot of the panel lines on this model are pretty much perfect and didn't need any adjustment or extra depth. Now I do go over them uh, once or twice just to make them a bit deeper so they don't disappear after a couple coats of paint. And some other areas uh, like on the front where the housing is around the headlights, it did need a bit more depth as I'm going to be painting that in a black color and later adding some carbon fiber. So having that panel line accentuated a bit more is a lot easier later on when I'm doing the masking. All the panel lines now got a little bit of attention, are a bit deeper and look nice and clean. So I could then move on to sanding now the entire body with 400 grit. Now normally on a plastic body I would be using a 600 grit as 400 would be a bit too rough as it bites into the plastic really hard and leaves some pretty deep scratches. With the resin being a bit harder of a material than the plastic, I could use a bit of a rougher grit sanding sponge in order to still get it all nicely scuffed up and have the primer stick to it properly. All of the sanding creates a lot of dust and that dust likes to go in all of those tiny hard to reach spots and also of course into the panel lines. I take out my Tamiya anti-static brush to clean that all out and clean the rest of the model off as well in order to get it ready for the primer stage. The body is then placed on top of a Tamiya spray stand. I have links in the description if you're interested and I blow over it with some air through the airbrush to get all that loose dust that is still on it. The last couple of months I've really come to like Tamiya Primer. The grey primer in this case works really well on metal and also on resin. It sticks super well and leaves a nice finish. So of course I shook up the can and then started on those hard to reach easy to forget spots. In this case on this model the entire thing is a hard to reach easy to forget spot so let's just not use that phrase anymore in this video and just get on with the primer. After applying the first coat, I quickly checked over the model to see if there were any imperfections that needed to either be sanded out or fixed before applying a second coat. During that quick look, I couldn't really find anything, so I let it sit for about 10 minutes to cure, then moved on to applying a second coat of primer. The second coat went on just fine like the first one, though a couple of dust spots appeared and also a weird spot on the front bumper, and that of course needed to be fixed before moving on to paint. Now luckily I can sand this out with a 3000 grit sanding sponge or just some 3000 grit sandpaper to fix it, get the primer nice and smooth and have a perfect base for the color to go on top of. As far as colors go on these McLarens, options are pretty much endless. You can order any color you want 
and have that specifically made or choose from a wide variety of standard colors that are optioned for this car. A lot of those colors are really bright, some oranges, some reds, even some blues. And I really did like those, but preferably those colors would be used on an LT in my personal opinion. For this one, I think the car is a bit classier and therefore needs a bit of a classier color and also a combination with the wheels and a lot of carbon fiber. I thought that a Nardo Grey from Audi would look really, really cool. So of course the primer was applied, that was sanded smooth, all the imperfections were removed and then the color could go on in a couple layers. The Nardo Grey is covering really well, so after the first coat I let it sit for about 10 minutes to cure and then applied a second coat. The second coat covered it pretty much all the way, but just to be sure, as always, I like to wait another 10 minutes and apply a third and final coat of color. The third coat of paint is also applied. I then set the body aside to cure overnight before masking it off. I wanted to be absolutely sure that the paint was properly cured before applying a lot of masking tape on top of it as when the paint is still a bit uncured the masking tape can leave some weird imprints or just rip it off entirely and that's not what I wanted so just to be sure I set it aside overnight to dry and then moved on to the next day with a lot of the masking. In the front I'm of course masking out the surrounds for the headlights which will be painted black and then in a later stage I will be applying some carbon fiber decal to them as well and then also moved on to some vents on the side and finally the roof as well. With the first section now done, the masking tape has been removed and the paint has been cured. I could move on to the next section.
This final section has now also been painted black and I'm going to be adding a clear coat over the entire body. Now normally I would not do this before decals but since it's a lot of decals on a lot of different areas I just wanted to give the body and the color a bit of extra protection and also help the decals place themselves a bit easier. So I'm just going to apply a thick coat of clear right now, set that aside to cure for a couple of days and then next week when I get back to it I will sand it smooth with some 3000 grit and then start masking off all the areas that need the carbon fiber to be applied to it, create all the templates and start the decaling work.